Hi there, I'm Ishan Mani, president of the I Write Youth Club. And today, I'm very excited to speak with Mr. Bahram Rahman in our latest installment of the I Write Exclusive Author Series. Born in Kabul, Afghanistan, Mr. Rahman grew up during the Civil War and the Taliban regime. He earned a medical degree at Kabul Medical University and a master's in public policy in Germany, while also working on raising awareness about gender equality and youth political participation in Afghanistan as an activist. Mr. Rahman came to Canada as a refugee in 2012, and today he's a senior policy advisor at the Ministry of Health in Ontario. His first picture book, Governor General's Literary Award finalist, The Library Bus, was praised by the New York Times, and his fall 2021 picture book, A Sky Blue Bench, has received a starred review from Kirkus Reviews. Do check out all of his books. Now, thank you so much, Mr. Rahman, for taking the time to speak with me today. I know it's a uh, uh, quiet Friday evening, so thank you so much for taking the time uh, to chat today. Well, uh, thank you, Ethan, for reaching out, and it's it's an honor and a pleasure to to spend this time with you and and the, like your audience, your YouTube channel's audience, and uh, I'm all here for it. So let's get into some questions, and uh, yeah, thank you again for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. So you know, every uh, character has a sort of plot arc. Every hero has their journey, and you've certainly had quite a journey that you've undergone yourself in your life. So how did you get into writing and how did your personal experiences kind of shape um, your style of writing and the things you write about? Well, this is this is quite an interesting and, and a question. So what I will do probably will just break it down in smaller sure. pieces. Uh, so I, I see myself as an accidental writer. So I I studied medicine and I later on did public policy and public service and a, a lot of healthcare research. So I never thought I would be writing creatively. Um, so, um, but when when the time came to, to kind of write something and share what I wanted to share, especially for people that uh, like my, my kind of nephews and nieces and the people, the children in my life, um, I really want them to tell the stories of Afghanistan. Like I tell the stories of real Afghans, uh, ordinary Afghans, like, um, and so that kind of start became the, the, the impetus to, to write children books, finding a voice for the individuals that you usually don't see in like North American or the Western um, uh, world uh, that they're supposed to be reflected. Um, so yes, this is what well, this was kind of how it all started. And it's, uh, I think I, I write, I wrote the first draft of the library bus around uh, 2000, uh, mid 2018. And I have just loved it from from that day. This this whole process of creating something, um, yeah. And uh, in terms of um, what was the second part of the question? I, How I, maybe your personal that. experiences have impacted even the way you write? I know you talked about uh, what you write, yeah. about the way you write. Well, I, I think it did. It it really like this is how I, I write. I write mostly based on personal experiences. I write about the people that I have personally known, I have personally interacted, um, kind of bringing different elements of their stories together to kind of create a new arc, a character that is more um, like relevant and at the same time toler tolerable to the audience that I'm speaking uh, with. Uh, and, and mostly I would say North American and Western because I write in English my mother tongue is Farsi, so uh, the audience is definitely like people outside Afghanistan. Um, and I, I think that personally, like every um, element in every day of my life in the past kind of shaped the journey. Um, I'm generally a very like a soft spoken person. And I think Afghans are generally soft spoken, like even though they, they have this um, reputation of uh, I don't know, being uh, too tough or too strong, but that's kind of, I don't agree with that. Uh, so that's how the way I write and the way I tell the stories is more um, from that kind of perspective. 
it is stories that um, mostly convey ordinary stories of ordinary people that live and continued with their lives in probably one of the most difficult circumstances. It's the, the authentic stories of, uh, of real Afghans is what it is. It's certainly, yeah. I don't know, like it's, it's <laughs> very, um, like Afghanistan is a very multi-ethnic country. Um, what I try to tell is more like a story of one individual. Mm -hmm. And I think it's in this individual that I think we all kind of try to seek some sort of universality. Um, I hope. Yeah, I, 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 I love that answer. And I also like that you brought up that your mother tongue is Farsi and Farsi has a, a, a beautiful oral poetry tradition and, and written poetry tradition as well. Um, one of the books that I enjoyed reading, I, I read the, the English translation, but I know it's, I'm sure it's beautiful in, in um, Farsi as well as the Shah Nama, the great, um, the national epic of. Yeah, yeah just hold on. This what? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> By Ferdowsi, yeah. yeah. And I know that Farsi has such a beautiful written tradition. So how did growing up with, you know, your background as being Farsi with, you know, I'm sure you were surrounded by lots of great, you know, literature, lots of great poetry and the language itself is so beautiful. Um, how has that even impacted the sort of lyricality of your writing? And I know you write picture books, so it's, it's you know, there's fewer words, but, you know, you make more of an impact. Yeah, so for the in a way, the melody of a sentence is very important to me. And I, I totally agree. It probably comes from that rich uh, cultural kind of background of uh, Farsi or Persian literature. Uh, there's so much emphasis on like poetry is the sh is kind of the the, the, the most like a predominant form of expressing li literature in, in Farsi. Uh, so I have grown up reading this book or Shahnama, or I have been read by my parents uh, like in Farsi. It's in fact my name Bahram comes from this book, and all the names of my family members. Uh, and uh, in addition to these books, there are so many other books. But I think what is very interesting and exciting about uh, this oral cultural aspect of the storytelling in Afghanistan, that families tell their stories just orally from one generation to the other. So I have heard stories from my grandparents about like how things were, like from myths and from mythology to other aspects of normal life in the village, There's like before the time of, I don't know, historical time and later on, um, at the same from my parents. So it does inform quite a lot of how I write. And I'm very meticulous about um, when to kind of pick the right words with the kind of the write phonetics and the way it reads and it plays itself. Um, so when it, when usually I write a sentence um, with part of the story, then I kind of think about it, how it will read uh, and what kind of melodies it creates. So there's a lot of kind of that kind of back and forth and editing that goes into it until I get to a point that I'm like at least 80% or 85% satisfied with it. Um, otherwise, I think if you are a perfectionist, you will never be able to write to finish a book. So, <laughs> so it's, it's good to find a kind of a balance between um, uh, stopping at some point and letting it like sharing with others and take their perspective on it. Yeah, it's the, the revision and the resilience, right? Sometimes you have to just settle for um, the, the, the best that you can get versus keep going back and striking out and rewriting and striking out and rewriting. But I think that's one of the you know most beautiful things about being a writer is that you can just um, keep going back, keep revising, and you put your gift out into the world whenever you, you feel you're ready. Absolutely, yeah. So you mentioned um, the importance for you of telling the stories of people in, uh, from Afghanistan, uh, you know, of an Afghan background. So why do you think it's important for kids to be informed? And these are also, I mean, for a Western audience, for kids to be informed about the, the goings on of the world, especially in a country that's, you know, being especially in the past year so heavily reported on like Afghanistan. Yeah. 
Well, I think that it's very, very important. Like it, I think it has always been important. So I like, uh, like when I was a child, like I knew about stories of like, or at least I was told about the stories of other countries uh, from uh, like, and how people are grow up because then it creates a kind of a global community. So you can relate, you can understand, uh, you can kind of appreciate the differences. I think that's why it's so important to to bring authentic voices and authentic stories and 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 to create awareness about these cultures and experiences. Representation, I think, matters like significantly in how we are shaping the world and how we are communicating uh, and and creating new understanding of like what is important in general. Um, and for especially about Afghanistan, I think Afghanistan has always been a very misunderstood country, like um, the uh, different uh, due to so many political, social and cultural issues. Um, and, and Afghan stories were mostly told by others, like not Afghans. So you, you would, if you count probably you can count all Afghan writers like that produce fiction or nonfiction in English or other language probably like with the one uh, with all the fingers of your hands so it, it, it's not a lot of that. so I think it's really important like for um, for I feel it's important for for me and for others that are in the Afghan community to to produce and um, work of art, work of literature to tell this, this, this authentic story. Too. Um, and, and then through that, I think created uh, like a community and awareness and, and built relationships. So um, I think that's, that's kind of how I see it. And, and I hope people connect with, with my stories and, um, and kind of try to, uh, I always say that I want to open a small window of real life in Afghanistan, and I, I really hope that people um, have kind of see that life through that window that I have created, that, and hopefully I will continue to create. I hope so as well. And I was just thinking back when you were talking about the number of Afghan writers, especially of fiction. Um, I think the only other Afghan writer who I've ever read the work of is Khalid Hosseini, the, the Khalid, kite runner. Yeah. I think yeah. he's, I believe he's the only other Afghan writer, which is to me really striking because from every other country, I can imagine quite a few different names. And I think it's very, very uh, important that, uh, you know, all different countries, especially countries like, you know, uh, like Afghanistan, which is now coming to the forefront of um, political, social, cultural discussion. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's all over the news now for the past year, especially. Um, it's very important um, for to you know to be informed about those countries. Um, you also have a background as an activist, um, especially in uh, you know gender equality and youth political participation. And I heard a little bit of that in your importance of representation, the point you made about that. Mm. Um, and in both of your books, you feature um, girl characters and lots of lots of you know representation even there. So. I want to know a little bit more about how, where for you, activism and your writing intersect. Oh, it's, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, the um, I do see like children books as a as a tool for activism. I think it's one of the perfect tools because you can put aside um, a bit of like pol like politics around issues if you want to discuss them and and create more focus on the issue in its most purest and most kind of distilled form. Uh, because when you are communicating to that level, and I think you have to really strip down the idea to, to bring it to the core values. Um, but um, I did uh, um, activism, I would say, uh, I don't think I'm activist right now that I, I consider myself, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, an activist of not being activist. <laughs> uh, because it, in the past, what uh, when I was um, in Afghanistan, uh, especially between uh, 2000 kind of four until 2009, I was like quite involved a lot. Um, 
but then uh, when I left Afghanistan in 2012, uh, um, and I haven't returned back since then, um, I, I think my, my role has been quite limited. Uh, the, uh, our involvement has been quite limited. But what is important, I think, I see it as is to this creating dialogues and sharing information and creating awareness. I, I, I do see it as more as like as kind of one, like a duty. I, I wouldn't even consider it as an activism on the basis of for something or for the country, but it is, I see it as every Afghan's kind of duty to, to create that and build that kind of bridge that is, that is necessary um, for, for a public discourse. Yeah. Building bridges, I love that. And um, my closing question um, is, what is your advice? I mean, you've had such an amazing journey. Um, you've written such wonderful books. Uh, to any up and coming authors, if you could share any pearls of wisdom, what would that be? Oh, I think we should just write it. <laughs> uh, if you have an idea, write it down, write it quickly. Uh, uh, just don't think too much about it. Um, I uh, And when you feel that you're ready, uh, I think you, you have to go on with it. I have uh, met so many people, like we, especially recently, that tell that they have been working on, on a book for like six years. I said, well, how big is this book? But, uh, but you have to start from somewhere. So you have to put the words on paper. And once it's there, it's real. And, and, and then you can shape it and form it. Um, and I, I would also say this, uh, just seek um, an inspiration basically from anything and everything in life. There's so much, so much around us that can inspire us. So you don't have to focus on, on an issue or a topic, right? You can, uh, you can just think about the stories of the, the complete stories of individuals and, um, and don't think that you are writing to get published or don't think that you, you write it, just write the stories for yourself. And, and I think that's when um, you probably will write the best stories. Um, when I wrote the, the library bus, the first version of the library, the library bus was a very different story. And, and I kind of had try, was trying to convey a bit of that increasing awareness, a bit of advocacy type of work. Um, but some of the feedback that I received from my editor, which I'm so grateful to work with at this publishing house, is was that um, just write a story for yourself and, and then see how it how it goes and try to find a like I write for children, so try to write it from the from the perspective of a child. And and when I wrote the story again and and it it became a whole different story and full of life. And, and I, I think that's, um, that would be my suggestion. So um, yeah, I, and, and there's so much to do, so much to write about. So, uh, so many wonderful stories. Uh, I do also recommend uh, that, uh, think about like, write about, personal or unique experience of your own life uh, you um, and when you have that I think then that's when it becomes way more interesting and and way more um, uh, exciting so, yeah. it's all about the initial commitment writing for yourself writing authentically and then just seeing Absolutely. where the story takes you um, and I think that's that's beautiful Absolutely and as I, I understand, like everyone will need to find their own path. They, they need to think about their own uh, process of creating. Um, so you have to be flexible. Um, some people can write, just sit and just write. Some people take long walks uh, and just think about the idea. Uh, and then carve it. Some people plan it in advance. They develop their characters, the names, and all the context and the colors. Uh, and uh, and some like I usually see it as a one single picture. It's kind of a frame. I see it, 
Uh, and then I kind of built the story around that. For example, with this one, with the, with the uh, sky blue bench, um, I basically saw the image of this girl, um, and which was kind of, in some ways, it was not even a one person. It was like different elements of a few individuals that I have met previously. Uh, and I kind of, this idea of this girl and the, not having a bench to sit properly was I just stayed with me and then I kind of created the story around that. Um, so yeah, I think just experiment a little bit with different ways and different methods that whatever works for you, um, I'm sure. But commitment, of course, is the most important thing. You, you have to put it down and then it becomes more uh, workable and you can improve it later. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for chatting with me today, Mr. Rahman. It's really been a pleasure. Well, thanks uh, again for having me and, uh, and continue the great work you guys are doing. And, and it was an absolute pleasure. Well, thank you. Alrighty, and audience members, you can check out Mr. Rahman's books wherever you get your literary fix from. I'm Ishan Mani, president of the I Write Youth Club, signing off. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>